Hi everyone, it's Shirley Farrar and you have entered Encouragement on Fire. So today is February, 2023. This is our first segment and we are talking about heart disease. So in the month of February, um, everywhere you see this red symbol, it says, uh, be the beat. Uh, they're talking in regards to heart disease. For every woman, for every man that you know is going through different things um, in regards to their heart, we are here to provide some information. And that's all across the world, all across America. Uh, so I have decided to tune in and to utilize the Encouragement on Fire platform to talk about this chronic disease for the month of February. And so not only are we going to talk about, you know, heart disease, but we're also going to talk about Black History Month. And in addition to that, you know, for our, our Encourage Minute, we always have something to say about an update in regards to cancer, which is another chronic disease. So we're going to get started. We're going to go straight to our Encourage Minute. So for our Encourage Minute today, um, it is actually coming from ACL Journals, which is Cancer Statistics 2023, and this is Volume 73, Issue 1. So if you want more information, you can go online or you can go to that particular journal. And in this journal, they are talking in regards to a cancer being, you know, a major public health problem uh, in worldwide. You know, it's a it's a major problem worldwide, and it's the second leading cause of death in America, in the United States. Uh, that's huge. But there's something to be said about that, because during the pandemic uh, with coronavirus, during 2019, 2020, if we look at the death rate of, you know, the coronavirus, and that was an unfortunate thing. That happened to in many families. It has affected many families across the world. Um, but during that that pandemic time, 2019, 2020, do you know, in spite of all of that, during this time and that time frame, 2019 to 2020, 33% overall reduction in cancer deaths. That's 1.5%. That's huge. You know what that tells me? That tells me when people were going to see their oncologist in regards to cancer, and the, the doctors said for them and their families, put on the mask. When they were saying, wash your hands. When they were telling them, whatever you do, be mindful, self-care for yourself, they were listening. They were doing the work to keep themselves safe. Anytime numbers like this, there's a decline in the cancer and the cancer deaths. Because remember, if you have a chronic disease, what were they telling you during the pandemic? That you were more susceptible to getting coronavirus. But anytime you have individuals where there's a decline in the cancer death rate, that speaks volumes. So kudos to those people who were doing uh, doing the work, doing what you needed to do, and uh, providing the self-care for yourself and those that were their family members, helping them to do that work too. So that is the end of our encouragement. So we're now talking about heart disease. And heart disease is, you know, one of the number one deaths in the United States. That's one of the things that you've got to understand. Cancer is number two, but heart disease is number one. There was more than 600,000 deaths last year alone. Just about every year, it estimates the exact same, 600,000. And then number two is cancer. It's about 599,000 every single year. See, chronic disease is not something that we just ignore. This is, these are things that we have to put effort to and figure out what is going on and how do we, um, we go against these things. How do we figure it out by working with our doctors, by working 
uh, with our nutritionist. There's many people and specialized to assist us in this process. And then number three, number of deaths in the United States was unintentional injuries. And that was at 169,000 for the year. And then there was chronic lower respiratory. That was averaged about 160,000 a year. And then number five was strokes, 146,000 a year. So chronic disease is not something that, well, we're just going to ignore. We're just going to say, oh, it doesn't matter. Evidently, according to these numbers, it matters. You know, according to the medical news today, it says 74% of all deaths contribute to 10 causes. And the ones I just gave you, the first five, represent some of that 74%. So now I want to talk about, you know, heart disease overall. What is heart disease? Because a lot of times, you know, we're defining it in many ways. And I'm not saying what the way we're defining it is incorrect, but there's so many factors that come into play when we're talking about heart disease. So think in your mind right now, what do you believe heart disease is, okay? So this is what heart disease is based on the Mayo Clinic. And you guys know I love the Mayo Clinic. So the first one is blood vessel disease, such as coronary artery disease. So when the doctor's telling us that we should be um, mindful of the different oils, the different fats that we are intaking, right? Fried foods. We got to stay away from so many. We all love them, but we got to stay away from too many of them. Um, our dietary um, needs every day. What is it that we are eating? Are we eating fruits and vegetables more so than some of the other fats that we are eating? What are we doing? It clogs up our arteries. Many things are clogging up those arteries, causing the blood to flow slower. Oxygen is not getting through. All of this matters. The second one is irregular heartbeats, uh, uh, arrhythmia. Now, we have to really look at that because, you know, a lot of times we're thinking, all right, I know what the doctor said. I grew up this way you know, my heart has always done this, but I've been okay. And I don't really need to go to the doctor. Mm. We need to go to the doctor. We need to be mindful of this because what if there is something that you need to be aware of with that irregular heartbeat? You know, it may have been okay in the beginning, but now there's something's changing. Something is progressing Disease is what? Progressive. So we got to be mindful. What can we do to counteract it? You know, I'm encouraging you. Get out there. Be mindful. Go see your doctor. So many of us decide, you know, if I don't go see my doctor, then all is well. No, 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 no. Whatever is going on is going on. And the best recourse is to go find out how healthy you are. See, I didn't say how sick you are how healthy you are. See, I'm going to encourage you because all of that could be in your mind, but I want you to go because if there are some symptoms, there are some things going on, you need to go and talk to your doctor to find out. And guess what? If there's nothing there, eases your mind. But if there is something, now you can work on it. And now you can get accountability with other people and you can work on it together. So you don't walk alone. You can work out with other people. Um, and then there's the heart problems um, you were born with. So uh, that's congenital uh, heart defects. You know, as a baby, you're born and there's some type of defect. Well, you have to be monitored. You know, as long as the doctor is saying that you are at risk, you should be monitored. And listen, this is the thing. Even if the doctor says you're good, still go to the doctor, get checkups every so often. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Be proactive about your health. Self-care is everything. You know, we want to make sure that we're dealing with things before they get to that. I told you guys, I was in pain for over a year. Finally, my husband told me, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Went to the doctor. It took four visits to the doctor 
And then finally, I saw a specialist because I demanded to see a specialist. And that's when they diagnosed it. So I'm saying to you, don't wait, don't wait. See, it didn't matter if I decided not to go to the doctor. What was there was there. And as a faith-based person, I'm praying over myself. Well, guess what? The minute I can identify what it is, I know exactly what to pray for. But if you don't know, you're guessing. And I don't want you to guess. I want you to know, and I want you to be accountable. And now every step that you do, everything that you're doing is to be proactive and getting better or to remain better, right? Getting to the next steps. And then the other one is heart valve disease. So there could be a defect that needs to be corrected. And sometimes surgery is necessary. But guess what? If you do not go to your doctor, if you do not get certain tests done because they, they've they noticed some things, you will never know. And then, you know, I want you to look up. Actually, I want you to look up some information on heart valves and the defects that go along with that. Because if you know that there's some issues in your family, and you ignore it. You are putting your family at risk. See, you're already at risk. But think of the loved ones that are around you. Think of the people that you leave behind because you did not do the self-care. You, you, were, you were not proactive in making sure that you were going to be okay. So then they, they would be okay. It's really important for all of us to work together. And, you know, and they have a responsibility to do the exact same thing for you. We're family, right? We're all family. And we work together to make sure we're all healthy. That's how, you know, we, you know, we we provide memories in our family. We are here for the next generation, you know, never depriving our children of ourselves if we can help it, or never depriving our grandchildren of ourselves if we can help it. You know, I'm not talking to people you couldn't help it. I'm talking about the people who have an opportunity to go to the doctor and say, you know what? I'm going to do self-care and I'm going to take care of myself. All right. So if you also want to know and recognize some of the symptoms, you're always looking at the symptoms. You know, I told you I had symptoms and I didn't understand. They kept telling me, you got arthritis. I'm like, no, nah, my chest is hurting. My chest is hurting. Come on. This can't possibly be arthritis. Now, in some cases, maybe it was. But for me, I'm sitting there saying, oh, this is really hurting bad. Um, but in this coronary heart disease, there starts to be chest pain, um, chest tightness. Come on now. And then, you know, chest pressure, discomfort, angina, you know, um, shortness of breath. Now I'm not talking about somebody doing a marathon and you're just out of breath. I'm talking about you're standing there and you're out of breath or you walked up to the street or you walked to the post postal box and you're out of breath, something wrong especially if six months ago, that wasn't happening. A year ago, that wasn't happening. We have to really look at ourselves and say, you know what? Something's going on and I need to get this fixed. I need to get this right because I love my family. I love me and I want it all to be okay. Um, also, pain in the neck, jaw, throat, upper belly area of the back. Now, these are some symptoms that, you know, you can't really ignore. Um, it's different if you are not aware of them. See, you, you cannot fault people that are not aware of these symptoms. Sometimes I've heard people say they had no symptoms at all. And if you don't have any symptoms, no one can ever fault you for that. But if there's some symptoms, pain, numbness, weakness of, uh, or coldness in the legs, you ever hear your family talking about, their legs are cold or, um, you know, arms or blood vessels, something's going on. You hear somebody saying their jaw, their throat is hurting. If you hear any of these signs, these symptoms, I want you to be aware moving forward. And I want you to mention to them that, you know what? I was listening to Encouragement on Fire. And they were talking about some information that came from the Mayo Clinic. And I want you to listen to this podcast. So I want you to go to Mayo Clinic. I want you to look at this information or print the information out for them. You can go on Mayo Clinic. You can go on the CDC. There's information in regards to all kinds of chronic diseases. Print out the information. Share it with them because you know what? You love them. They're your family. They're your friends. Share that information. 
Remember, this is Heart Disease Awareness Month, February. And this is the month that we know, all of us know people in our lives that either have been diagnosed with irregular heartbeats or they've been diagnosed with um, you know, heart valve uh, disease or it could be blood vessels, it could be congenital. Come on, let's be mindful to help our community members. So it may not be your family, it may not be your friends, it could be the, the man or woman up the street. You know they're going through some situations Make, make life a little easier for them. Help them, you know, in some capacity. Let's be compassionate this month. Let's start something new. Um, you know, just, you know, helping our neighbors, being mindful, sharing information, right? Sometimes just printing out information and sharing it with someone that you're concerned about because you care about them. And I know all of you can think of one person right now, just one person that may need this information. Take the time, print it, print it out and give it to them or take the time and have a conversation with them. You know, one of the things I, I believe if you share information with someone and if they don't receive the information, it's okay. It's okay because you love them enough to tell them about it. And you know what? Just because they didn't receive it today doesn't mean they won't remember your wonderful conversation of compassion. And they may remember it next week or next month or next year and say, you know what? When such and such shared that information with me, maybe I should go to the doctor or maybe I should look into that. And you may be the one that saves their life. Another means for what is heart disease is if someone has a stroke and peripheral arterial disease, that's another. When someone's going through a heart arrhythmia symptom, they can go through a couple of different things. There could be chest pain or discomfort, dizziness. There could be flutterings. I remember a time when either myself or another sibling, we were having flutterings. It's, it's kind of vague right now. Um, but I think the doctor at the time was going to monitor whatever it was and put us on the, you know, those little machines in the office. And they said at this time it was nothing. So we, um, we were just waiting, you know, if something came up later, but I don't think anything came out of it. Um, and it also could be racing a heartbeat or slow heartbeat. So these are things that we also should be mindful of as well. Now, we also said that there were some symptoms of individuals, how you will know that they have heart disease or there's something serious going on with them. It could be a newborn baby. If you notice that there's pale gray or blue skin um, or lips, that's another indication. Um, when you're feeding the baby, if you notice that there's shortness of breath, those are some things, some signs that you need to be aware of. If a person has uh, heart valve problems, you're going to notice chest pains right away. You're going to notice fainting, um, fatigue. Now, some of these symptoms relate to other things. But remember, we're talking about things that have two and three um, symptoms. Also, the shortness of breath, swollen feet and ankles. Now, that could be a lot of things, too. But remember, we're talking about two and three of these symptoms. Remember, we're talking about always writing down our symptoms every single month. So we are aware of what's going on and the doctor can better diagnose you because that's what they're doing, practicing. They're um, better diagnosing you. Um, let's see. Also, endocarditis. Um, yeah, endocarditis is an infection that affects the heart valves and inner lining of the heart chambers and heart valves. Now, with this one, the symptoms can be dry or persistent cough. I remember having a cough. Mine wasn't related to this, but it was because of the cancer pushing on my lungs, right? Um, and the fluid filling up in my lungs. Then there could be fever, um, heartbeat 
changes, you know, where it was slow, now it's fast, or fast is slow. Um, shortness of breath is a huge one. And then skin rashes or unusual spots. Now that in itself can go with many different chronic diseases, but I want you to be mindful that, remember in a previous podcast, we talked about, you know, chronic diseases. If you have one chronic disease, you have to be careful because, if you're not eating right or if you're not exercising or you're not you're not doing some of the things that you ought to for the one type of chronic disease, that could go into another type of chronic disease. So you'll you'll start to notice that if a person is not being mindful of one of their type of chronic diseases, then they'll eventually get another. So we all have some work to do as we're moving forward myself included. Some days I'm, I'm better than others. I'm still working through my process. And I'm hopeful that you too will be encouraged like I am, that we'll work together, that we will encourage one another to do better, to be our best self. So now I also told you that I wanted to do something for uh, Black History Month, in addition to talking about heart disease. Black History Month is so important. I am African American, and I am in the United States of America, and I am very proud that there are African American or slash Black Americans who um, have many inventions, and many times we have day-to-day -day inventions that we are utilizing and we have no idea that they were invented by an African-American or they were invented, you know, by a black person. And so I just want to read through about 10 of them because I want you to tell me I knew that or I didn't know. All right. And listen, even if you say I knew that, then that's good. That means we're all educated, knowing all of these facts. But if you didn't, then maybe today I can introduce you to a fact that you did not know. Okay. So the first one that I will say to you is the gas mask. So if you did not know, Garrett Morgan um, was the one who created the gas mask, the protective mailbox. Who, who who thought of that, right? So that was Philip B. Downling. He uh, Now, I look at that, and I have a mailbox. Now, I went out and got a mailbox that you need a key to get in and out. Um, I'm that person, right? So I'm just saying, but just to have your mail in something secure, you know, that's who we... Philip, thank you so much. Um, and your family. So folding cabinet bed. That was Sarah Goody. And that was in 1885. The potato chips. How many of y'all love the potato chips? Now, I love mine. My potato chips, um, homemade. However, if I'm on the road, potato chip is a potato chip. And a potato chip is delicious. And that was George Crumb. And then we have Blood Bank. All right. So Charles Richard Drew, um, the discovery was separating the red blood cells, right, from the plasma. Now, I think in most neighborhoods now, especially in New Jersey, they're starting to develop uh, plasma uh, facilities. Uh, it, now, that's interesting to me. I don't know a lot about that, but I always did think, who does that and where did they do that at? I used to think that it was just done in the hospital. Maybe we could do a segment on that because that sounds very interesting, okay? Uh, maybe on one of our career talk days, we'll talk about that. Uh, also, improved ironing board. That was Sarah Boone. Home security systems. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I love my security system and I like to maintain it. That was done by Mary Van Britten Brown, who created it simply to keep her family safe and therefore helping other people. Isn't it wonderful how most of the time when we invent something is because out of need, right, for ourselves. And now we can help someone else. The three light traffic uh, light, that was Garrett Morgan. I think most people know that one. Um, but that's a wonderful thing to know that when you look up for the, the three light traffic light, that who invented that? A black man invented that. Um, and then refrigerated trucks. Now, y'all know that's important. Oh, my goodness. To just be able to 
carry food from one place to another. That was Frederick McKinley Jones. And then the automatic elevator doors, 1887, Alexander Miles. Yes, I always think about that. Now I'm telling y'all, I encourage you to travel up and down the floors by walking, right? That's what we want you to do. Walk, walk, walk to get more exercise. However, on those days that you just can't do that, you get on that elevator and every time that that elevator opens up and that door opens and closes, you will be thinking of Alexander Miles. All right. And last but not least, the tissue holder for everyone that cries and you have some tears and you're like, oh, my goodness. And, you know, um, that was Mary Davison when she was uh, disabled um, with multiple sclerosis. She created the tissue holder. Isn't it fabulous how wonderful people are? You know, we all have something that we're going through in life, whether it is um, many types of chronic disease or you're going through different um, ups and downs in your life. And, you know, be encouraged. Be encouraged to persevere. Be encouraged to make yourself accountable to do better. You know, you don't have to do 100% better. Just a little bit more than you did yesterday, right? Just a little bit. So if you think about yesterday and you say, oh, my goodness, I didn't do so well. You know, I always tell the ladies at the church, right? Tell the ladies in the community, then begin again. You know, they always laugh. And when I say that, I say, mm -mm. begin again. Whatever you did yesterday, if you are not happy about it, if you say, I can improve, well, did you wake up this morning? Yes, you woke up this morning. So begin again. It's really that simple. You know, even if you can't do a whole lot, what can you do? So I am Shirley Farrar, and this has been Encouragement on Fire. And for the month of February, we are talking about heart disease, and we are emphasizing Be the Beat. So I will talk to you soon.